Imagine yourself working on a piece of music, and you may say to yourself, "I want the music to sound like Bill Evans, to turn a ringtone into a fugue, connect two phrases, modulate from F to E in four bars, to use colorful chord extensions if you're into jazz." We know that we want better control over the generated music, and wouldn't it be nice if we have a powerful General-purpose music generation system, and this is where my research started. One general way to exert our control is by encoding what we want into an objective function. This objective function could be human rating, handcrafted rules, or even neural network. Suppose that we have this function at our disposal. The core question then becomes. Given any music evaluation scheme, how do we generate music accordingly? The evaluation could be based on some notion of similarity, based on rules or interactive rating, and the generative process could be sequential or an optimization process. In this paper, the proposed algorithm generate music by keep modifying a given piece of music in the direction of maximizing a given fitness function. Now let's focus on these two crucial components: fitness function and optimization algorithm. The fitness function can be single-valued or multi-valued, and depending on which, their optimization have very different behaviors. In this paper, we will use a single-valued function for simplicity. Now let's take a look at some examples of musical objectives. In the demonstration in this paper, we are trying to build a 18th-century first species counterpoint. So, the melody, the fitness are developed into two parts: melody fitness and counterpoint fitness. The melody fitness, as the name suggests, only evaluates a single melody. The fitness has three tiers: concerning hard rules, local shape, and global shape. And the counterpoint fitness use this melody fitness in its sub evaluation. Notice on tier two we have outer voices evaluation and inner voices evaluation on tier three. Notice that the sub evaluations re related to harmonies are mostly expressed in terms of intervals instead of chord tones, and this is an intentional choice. To see if simple harmonic rules can be expressed as the result of contrapuntal rules. We saw that there are many objectives we want the model to achieve simultaneously. So a natural question is, how do we combine them into one function? Many of the previous works using the evolutionary algorithm to generate music use a linear combination. Of sub-evaluations, this is easy to compute. However, not very easy to control and tune. One of the core problem is the difficulty to control trade-offs among sub-evaluations. Suppose we have an objective y, which we want the algorithm to go for it, but only when objective x is met. In a linear combination setting. We will have no way to specify the conditional preference, no matter how we tune the weights. To cope with this, we could start by using a tier structure. That is to only consider a higher tier reward when lower tier is satisfied. Although this made it easy to express conditional preferences, it made it really hard to optimize. Since now the model don't get any information about high tier fitness landscape when it is a lower tier, and this opens up the risk for the model to not be able to plan ahead, and then be stuck at local maximum. For example, suppose our fitness function put general contour evaluation at the highest tier, and we all know that having a nice contour requires a lot of planning, and that's why human composers often plan ahead. On the shape of the piece. From the model's perspective, 
it does not get any incentive to make the music controls better when there are more fundamental objectives to be satisfied. And thus, it might be too late when the model sends high tier rewards and be trapped at local maximum. To deal with this problem, I propose a smooth linear combination design. We see that instead of each tier activate on a binary manner, now all the tiers are activated in a smooth manner, and this gives the model ability to sense high tier reward while it is still in lower tiers. And this is the corresponding mathematical formulation. Notice that in the middle, the tiered linear combination is achieved by applying a diagonal matrix, which functions as a pointwise multiplication. The ti's are either 0 or 1, depending on whether a previous tier satisfaction have met to a certain threshold, which is represented by SI. And the only difference between the tier linear combination and the smooth tier linear combination is the middle function highlighted in blue. In a tier linear combination, that function is a unit step function, while in the latter, it is a smooth approximation of the unit step function. Now we dive into more detail on what we mean by a smooth approximation of the unit step function. The function of our interest is notated by sigma, highlighted in blue. The sigma here does not refer to the logistic function, so it's just a notation coincidence. And on the right, we can see a family of smooth function sigma w having various shapes. And the only difference is their behavior from negative 1 to 0. This is the range that represents how far away the previous tier performance from the desired thresholds, or distance to target satisfaction threshold. The parameter w is changeable, depending on how you like your activation to smoothly transit from 0 to 1. The very detail of how the sigma w is constructed can be found in the appendix of the paper. Notice that using this sigma instead of the unit step function encourages the model to not focus so much on high tier at the beginning, but gradually shifting its attention to high tier objectives as low tier ones are met. Usually this fitness function can be very hard to optimize often non-differentiable or not even continuous, and that is why I turn my head to heuristics like evolutionary algorithm. By the way, there's no reason why we should restrict it to evolutionary algorithm. I use it simply because I feel it's easier to control the local search behavior by designing appropriate mutations on crossover. In a nutshell, evolutionary algorithm is a kind of random search optimizations. The unique point is that they use natural selection to choose candidate solutions and use mutations and crossover to sample new candidates. So the evolutionary algorithm has three core components, population, fitness function, and variation operators. The population is a collection of potential solutions to be sampled. The fitness function is to evaluate the individual population. And the variation operators is to control the change of distribution of candidate solutions. And before we jump right into the detail of variation operator designs, let's have a look of the music encoding scheme. Instead of encoding music as a sequence of events, we use a multi-dimensional array to capture the rhythmic hierarchical structure of music. Let's have a look at this example. This array has a dimension of 4 by 3 by 3 by 2. 
the four represents their four voices. The three represent their three bars. And the second three represent that there are three beats in a bar. And the final two represent that there are two divisions in a beat. So you can see this rhythmic hierarchy can be naturally encoded by the shape of the NumPy array. Each entry of the array encodes a general note object, which in addition to pitch can also represent rest and tight note. Pitch is represented by integer, rest is represented by dot, and tight note is represented by a star. The versatility of NumPy array in computation makes it really easy to manipulate the encoded music. We can choose part of the music by slicing or masking. We can get the core sequence by reshaping and transposing. It also makes it really easy to parallelize computations when implementing our fitness function. And if you want, you can use a music template to constrain the piece. You may want to only allow a certain section to be changeable. You may want to fix the duration of notes in a particular location. Those operations can be very easily implemented by NumPy array masking. We will see more applications of this music template later, together with the generated result. With this music encoding in mind, we can start to talk about the variation operators in this paper. The purpose of variation operators is to efficiently traverse the fitness landscape which is not very easy. The notion of neighborhood in the musical sense does not come naturally by Euclidean metric. For example, by Euclidean metric, moving the whole voice by an octave is a huge change, and thus will rarely be sampled in a traditional way. However, musically, we don't see it as dramatic as just adding half step random shift to the whole, whole voice, which will create a lot of dissonance and thus induce a large change in the music quality. So the question arises, how do we incorporate meaningful music operations and also encode them in a systematic way? One thing that we want to have is pitch shift, and this is the most canonical motion to fix a wrong note. But the unique thing about this encoding enables us to make pitch shift hierarchical performing it on beat level, measure level, and voice level. Another thing we want is a swapping motion. This can be very helpful in permutation-related tasks, especially chord voicings and voice leadings. Again, we can make this hierarchical. On the right, there are three examples of this swapping operation, performed in different ways. All the three examples perform swapping on beat level, but with respect to different parents, the top swapping happened within a measure, the middle happened in adjacent measure, the bottom happened in adjacent voices, which is equivalent to vertical swapping. The crossover design is very simple. It input two pieces, exchange the same part of piece, and output the resulting two pieces. It could be exchanging the third measure or exchanging the first note. Just by using this simple but hierarchical operator, the number of operations needed to fix a small music problem reduced dramatically comparing to non-hierarchical counterpart. The sampling of the locations to perform the operations are guided by an attention mechanism, which will be introduced in the next slide. To test this algorithm, I built a simple optimization interface for the user. On the top left, we have a snapshot of the best music candidates in the population. The graph is similar to a media plot. The y-axis represents pitch and the x represents axis represent bar number. Each color line represents a voice and each dot is an eighth note, so a quarter is plotted as two eighth notes. 
On the top right, we have an interactive attention plot. Attention is a hyperparameter that governs the mutation of the crossover. It basically tells the population to only perform changes on specific regions. The user can click on the cross to specify where the population should focus on in the piece. The purple dots represent the distribution of attention in the spatial region of the music. If the user don't specify the attention, the attention will change dynamically on its own. In fact, in this algorithm, the behavior of attention assignment is modeled as a co-evolution process. Attention has its own population and evolution process, and its fitness is, de is determined by their likelihood to lead to better fitness improvement of the music population. On the left bottom, we have an evaluation plot. The user can see in real time how the current best candidate performs in each subcategories of the fitness function. With this interface, we basically turn the human computer inter composition process into a st stochastic game where, while we are looking at the piece and the evaluation, we assign the attention to guide the music evolution. This observation and action cycle could give room to future expansion with reinforcement learning, allow some optimization experience to be passed down. Here are some examples of the generated music. Depending on the music template, the user can specify fixed notes and free to modify notes in the piece of music. The orange notes are modifiable by the algorithm, while the black notes are constrained. This particular example is where everything is modifiable. This has some constraints. This also. As well as these two. One very interesting point of the music is that we see triads automatically emerges just based on the interval wise constraint. This is consistent with music theory and the formation of triads based on maximizing contrapuntal consonants. The model generally copes with avoiding parallel octaves or fifths fairly well, but it has some unnecessary weird jumps from time to time. The abundance of first inversion chords is also a surprise, and it has something to do with the way some specific sub-evaluation regarding interval preferences are encoded. There are several other weird spots, and I think it's a reflection of not including some important objectives in the fitness function. A more careful refinement of the sub-evaluation could be very helpful to bring this project further. There are many directions this, pro this project can be extended, including even better hierarchical encodings using tree structures induced by some music reduction process. Another important work is to build a library of fitness evaluation. It will first include a collection of useful and customizable evaluations, basically put elementary music theory in concrete terms. I hope this collection gets expanded with the help of musicians, musicologists, and generally everyone else who wants to contribute music domain knowledge. For the application of this research, the first and what interests me the most is to use it in the study of music itself, including music theory, musicology, and music education. We can use it to simulate the musical result of theory about how music works. Secondly, we can use it as a composition tool. This can compose without prior examples, but we need to make clear about what we want in terms of musical objectives. And ultimately, I hope this can contribute to the building of more interpretable music composition AI, establishing a path pathway between analysis and composing actions. And finally, I want to thank Professor Panayotis Mevromatis and Professor Brian McPhee for their valuable suggestions on this research project. I also want to thank the three anonymous reviewers for their time spent to provide feedback on this paper. Thank you.